Alright, here's a game of Netrunner between me, the criminal, Gabriel Santiago, consummate professional, and the corporation, Jinteki, personal evolution. Right away, he's going to play a beanstalk, which is really interesting, because Jinteki usually has an asset-based economy, not an uh, operation-based economy. And there he goes, icing up HQ from the get-go. Great move. Uh, my economy is based on getting two credits from each turn from a successful HQ run. I can't do that right now unless I want to blast my face off with whatever those ice are. So I'm not going to go there. But R&D is wide open, so I have no problems going there. He's probably hoping that the snares and fetal AIs will scare me off. So there's six cards in the deck that can hurt me out of R&D. Uh, it's six out of 40 plus. I'm feeling pretty good about those odds. Uh, a little less than... I don't know. 6 out of 40. 1 in 8. 1 in 9. A little less than 1 in 10. Okay, so what happened there is I actually should have installed the Desperado before running R&D to get a credit out of it. Because Desperado gives you a credit for every successful run, no matter what. Uh, so I politely asked if I could sort of undo my second click to install the Desperado and use the third click for that R&D run. He didn't mind. It was just a friendly game. In a tournament, I'm sure he would have said hell no, and that would have been my mistake. This is why you need to play more slowly and think about what you're doing. It was just also, you know, a difference of one credit. You know, not the biggest deal. But yeah, I really like how Desperado gives you a credit for every successful run, as opposed to uh, Gabe's ability, which gives you two credits for the first successful HQ run each turn, and also the Doppelganger, which only gives you one free run per turn. So if you think about it that way, and you consider a click and a credit to be equal, uh, Desperado basically gives you a free click uh, for every run, whereas Doppelganger only can give you one free click per turn, and that's why I think it is better, especially in cases like this, right, where my economy would be shut down normally, because HQ is locked up, but I can go to R&D and get a little bit of economy. You know, I spend a click to run R&D, I get to see a card, and I get a credit out of it. So you notice, in this game, I'm drawing a lot of cards, right? Number one, if I take net damage, uh, I need to, you know, I always want to make sure I have a ton of cards in my hand so I don't die. Uh, so I'm filling my hand with cards at the beginning of every turn. Also, by putting cards in my hand at the beginning of the turn, uh, that gives me, you know, better decisions uh, to make during that turn. If I were to play the turn with the hand I had and then draw, that would not work out so well. There might have been options available to me. Uh, in the cards that I would have drawn, that I would have liked to play, more so than the cards that were already in my hand. He installs an upgrade on uh, HQ, which is interesting. You don't see upgrades in the central servers too often, uh, but I've been seeing it a little bit more lately. So I also have uh, an event-based economy. Have some uh, easy marks and sure gambles. So I play those to get some credits when I can't run HQ, and I run R&D, get a credit for that for my Desperado. I haven't seen any good cards in there yet. But see, even just that little Desperado and the Hedge Fund, I'm piling up on credits. Uh, and there they all go to bring out Crypsis. Crypsis is actually the best uh, icebreaker against Jinteki because their ice aren't particularly that strong, you know, and there also might be data mines, and Crypsis is really the only way to deal with a data mine that's, you know, not stupid. <laughs> um, I guess you could inside job around it once. It's not really that great. You could put a Femme Fatale on it. That's really dumb. You could put a Parasite on it. That's, you know, but that you're still going to have to run into it first. Okay, so I finally get the sneak door here. Uh, so I can start getting three credits by using that sneak door. Because I get two from the Identity Gabe and one from Desperado. Archives has no ice. 
And I get a fetal AI immediately. This is why I never run and access cards without having two credits against Jinteki. You know fetal AI is in there. So I take three net damage, two from uh, fetal AI and one because I stole an agenda. I have to access that upgrade in HQ because actually using the sneak door is a successful run in HQ and you must access all the cards. Uh, it's an Akataro. That sort of makes sense. Right? It makes a lot of sense. It's actually a pretty, really great upgrade to have uh, on HQ against Gabe. So even if I run down there when his economy is low, he can res a whole bunch of cards uh, for not a lot of money. Yeah. So because I took the damage, I'm going to do a lot of card drawing now. And my economy is very low. Right? So look at this. As soon as my economy is low, my Crypsis has no virus counters on it. He installs a card in the remote server and ices it up. So... He, if he advances that, if that's an agenda and he advances it, you know, he can easily score that before I'm able to get in there and take it from him. You know, for the corp, it's all about timing. When the runner's economy is low, start, you know, put agendas on the table and start advancing them when they can't get in. Even if they have the cards to get in, if they don't have the money to get in. All right, and there you go, of course, he scores a brain trust, one, two, three. Right, when I had no chance to steal it on the previous turn, I take a net damage. It's a Crescentus. I don't really need that against Jinteki. He's not going to have any big expensive ice that I would want to derez. So I'm, you know, I'm happy to lose that card as opposed to some others. Okay. Yeah, I'm pointing out how awesome it is that Desperado gives me a credit for every run, even on R&D. Every successful run. I use a sneak door again. I keep seeing that same neural EMP. He's probably got a hand full of them. That means I really need to always have a bunch of cards in my hand uh, at the end of a turn after making a successful run, which is almost every turn, so I don't get neural EMP to death. I install a decoy, which is going to be helpful uh, if I hit a snare. I won't have to spend a click and two credits to bust the tag after the snare. So I'm not actually even worried now about running on the last click. Now a tag w might not be too bad. Uh, I only have one resource, which is the compromised employee, but I still don't want to lose that. You know, and some people with Jinteki now are playing Scorched Earth. It happens. So you can see, thanks to Sneak Door, uh, my economy is back up. And he's installed some more, another card in that remote server. And I could probably afford to go in there, but I have to spend my clicks drawing cards back up. And I get a second compromised employee, which now, that actually makes a difference. Even though not a lot of ice is going to be rezzed, I'm going to get two clicks for every rezzed, uh, two credits for every ice that's rezzed this entire game. I use my sneak door, and I get lucky. There's an Issei, two more points. And I lose a Desperado, which I don't need, because I already have one on the table. So, you know, when I eventually am going to run servers that have ice on them, I'm going to get a lot of money. Uh, he scores another brain chest right, while I'm not running his remote server. I lose an emergency shutdown I don't need, again, because there's no reason to derez cheap ice. I draw back up. At the beginning of my turn, I always draw back up. Make sure I have full health. It's like a healing potion. Run R&D. And I get lucky as a private security force. Now I'm at six points. Um, lose a Crypsis I don't need because I already have one on the table. But yeah, being at six points really you know, gives you control of the game. I'm not worried... Uh, about a fetal AI, I have the economy to, s to pay for it. Um, as long as I have more than one card in my hand when I hit it, I'll be okay. Any other agenda I see won't do its net damage to me because the game will, you know, I'll win the game by scoring it before the damage happens. So bravery level just went up, desire to run just went up, and at that moment, he blocks up the archives.
So sneak door is now shut down. I can either run those new ice on the archives, or I can run HQ directly. I'm still going to run R&D as long as it's open. I do get one credit from Desperado for that. And uh, hey, you know, any card could be the winning card. There's only five agendas on the table. He's probably got all two-point agendas. That's how Jinteki usually rolls. So um, there's probably five more in that deck. And I decide to use my sneak door. It's only two ice compared to three. He reses a data mine, which is actually pretty great because I get two credits from my compromised employees. And I have Crypsis, which is perfect for data mine. Uh, and I really don't feel like taking a damage right now, so I do break the data mine, which means it stays on the table, which is very interesting. Uh, and then after is Hunter. Very interesting. He, you know, if he would have scored a pr personal security force, private security force, instead of me, the tag would be much more threatening. Uh, but I have two credits on the compromised employees I can use for traces. He does not boost the trace because its economy is low. So I only really pay one credit to break the hunter. Because I made a successful HQ run with Sneak Door, I get three. So actually, I totally broke even on that run, maybe even profited. I still access HQ. And there's a snare. The first snare of the game is out, so I take my damage. But I use my decoy to bust the tag. So I don't have to waste a click and two credits to get rid of that tag. And my compromised employees are safe from destruction. And that was actually good to have the decoy, because that was my last click of the turn. Run if I you know, if I hadn't had the decoy, running on the last click getting tagged, I would not have had a click left to remove it. I would have been in slightly more trouble. That's why a lot of people don't run on the last click, but decoy uh, allowed me to be brave in that regard. I keep pressuring R and D. Refill my hand again. And let him go. See, he still has those beanstalks, right? With this uh, operation based economy of Jinteki, you're really sort of forced to draw into your deck to get money, right? It's like if you want money, you have to fill your, your hand with cards. Uh, which is why I like the asset based economy better. Not only, you know, can it fool people for traps and hurt the runner's economy trying to destroy the pad campaigns and marked accounts and things like that nature. But you won't have to start drawing a ton of cards as the corporation when you're poor, right? That's, you think about it, you draw cards when you're poor, okay, so you have no money and you fill your hand with agendas, that's great. Uh, the, you know, I think it works a lot better in Wayland where you have money from other sources. So yeah, I ran. I hit the second snare of the game. Uh, I took my damage happily. Right? I absorbed it quite nicely. I removed the tag manually. And then I draw my hand back full of cards so I don't get Neural EMP'd into next Sunday. See, that huge mountain of credits... I built almost all of that came from just constantly running R&D and HQ and getting credits from Desperado and Gabe's identity card. If he had somehow blocked up archives and HQ and R&D such that I couldn't get in there, or that it was so expensive to get in there using Crypsis uh, that I couldn't profit by running, that pretty much shuts down everything that criminals are about. It's all about being able to run and get money as a side effect of running. Whereas the Shaper will tend to get a pile of credits, then spend it all running. And sort of have this cycle of going up and down. Uh, you know, the criminal just keeps running all the time and actually gets money via running. Sometimes what can happen with criminal is they'll run a lot in the early game and build up a pile of money like this. 
and then in the late game they'll have to spend all that money as runs are no longer profitable uh, due to the resed ice. Okay, so he's installed another card in that remote server. And he's got too many cards in his hand. You know, he's been drawing through to get his economy cards. So this is where I lay out the account siphon. Right? He doesn't have a lot of money. So I'm thinking, it's probably dangerous to run the remote server. I'll run HQ, which at least I'll get a side, I'll get a benefit of running HQ no matter what. And if I account siphon his economy away, then he won't be able to advance and score that agenda. So the first ice is a chum. I get two credits just for him resing the chum. Because of the compromised employees, another chum. So I get two more credits. And I do break that chum again with Crypsis. You know, you wonder, he had an Akataro back there. And now he's going to res the Akataro and use it. Now, I was like, hey, why didn't you use the Akataro earlier? You could have gotten those chums for free. But actually, you know, he didn't want to do that. The reason he didn't want to do that is he was trying to burn all his credits um, for the account siphon that was coming in. Right? So see there, he reses a San San. Very interesting. Uh, but it allows him to blow away all of his money uh, before the account siphon hits. Uh, I still get three credits for a successful HQ run. And I don't use the account siphon ability. Why should I take two tags? Why should I, you know, to, for make him lose one credit he has left and get two? That's not worth it, right? I'll access HQ normally, see a card, and uh, not take tags. I'll let you have your one credit. I still have succeeded in my goal of shutting down your economy. Uh, and I, I even got to see the card and saw that it wasn't an agenda. It was a San San. Oh, but there we go. A snare. I believe that's the third snare, so I'm not worried about snares at all anymore. Uh, but there are still two fetal AIs in the deck, which is still really great odds. So the thing is, actually, because I destroyed his economy, uh, even though the, it didn't use the account siphon directly, his economy was destroyed. That snare didn't go off. You'll notice I didn't take any net damage. He only had one credit left. It cost four to set off the snare. See, he was really in a catch-22 situation. He knew he had the snare in his hand. He knew he needed four credits to uh, set it off. If he would have tried to save four credits to set off the snare, I would have used the account siphon to get rid of his four credits and take eight. Uh, so he... You know, he was damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. But he could have taken credits uh, to set the snare off another day. So he only had one credit left. I ran that server. He used it to res a chum. I got money for that. I was almost 100% positive the card behind it was data mine because he had zero credits left, and chum data mine's really popular. Uh, but he didn't. When I So I got in there. I destroyed that sand sand. The reason I destroyed the Sansen is so that he couldn't score a card like Nisei uh, too quickly or a card like Brain Trust out of hand. Plus, he spent his whole all, a ton of ca credits resing that card. Right? So by destroying it, you know that it's like okay, he got something for his money, right? You know, I account siphon to destroy the economy, but he still got something for his money. So I take away that something, and that's a pretty severe blow. It's like if someone's, you know, you're going to come and rob someone's house and take all their money. They bought a big screen TV, and now they have no money left to steal. So you just steal the big screen TV instead. So I ran archives, I'm using my sneak door. I face planted into the data mine this time. I took care of the hunter's trace, which he didn't boost because he hardly had any money.
And there are face-down cards in archives uh, that he's discarded from having too many in his hand because he was drawing to uh, get his economy cards and other things. So I learned my lesson a long time ago. When there are face-down cards in archives, you got to run, especially if you have six. So there it is. There was indeed an agenda in the archives. I went in and took it. GG.